I'm going to live a little bit dangerously today. Among other things, I'm trying out a new camera app on my phone. Oh, careful. Mm, nice head. So, today's beer from Nonsuch Brewing in Winnipeg, Baltic Porter. A strong beer, 6.5% alcohol. Crafted at 125 Pacific Avenue, Winnipeg. The reason that that's relevant to anybody outside of Winnipeg is from the name, Nonsuch Brewing. Um, the Nonsuch was a Hudson Bay Company ship back in the uh, 1800s. No, 1600s, I'm sorry. Um, it was actually the ship that sailed into Hudson's Bay, Man northern Manitoba, that... Uh, that caused the founding of the Hudson's Bay Company uh, back in in 1670. Uh, and the reason that's relevant to these guys is there is a replica of that ship that was built in 1970 that actually sailed the uh, the coasts of uh, North America. Uh, it didn't cross the ocean, but it uh, it sailed the coasts, um, and it is inside the Manitoba Museum, which is about a block and a half away from this brewery. That's why that's important. Anyway, mailbag. That's quite nice. It's not as heavy as some, but it is quite nice. I like it. I'm going to have to go and visit the actual brewery. Uh, first item in, three pieces copper heat sinks. Often, as we've noted, the description on the bag is a complete lie. But I think this probably is what it is because I remember ordering these. And yes, they are in fact three copper heat sinks. Two of this size, which is in old measurements, about half an inch by half an inch, or for anybody who lives in the modern world, is that about uh, 14 millimeters square? And this one is about 15 milliliters square. Um, that one, they've all got 3M uh, thermal, hopefully thermal adhesive stuff on the back of them. Hopefully it's not just double-sided tape. That would suck. Three-piece set copper heat sink, heat sink cooling kit for Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. Um, I didn't buy it from this seller. I bought it from this seller, Makeup Factory, who doesn't currently sell it. Um, and I didn't pay $2.04. I got it at auction for $0.59. Cents. Now, why, why copper rather than aluminum? Well, apparently, copper has better heat conductivity even though it's uh, it's heavier and it's more expensive. But uh, that would be the main reason. Kind of caramel notes. That's kind of neat. Next thing in, shipped from within Canada, although clearly bought from outside of Canada, because that's just the way cheapness happens. Uh, so... That's a familiar looking bag. That looks like a reel of LED uh, strip of some sort. That's exactly what it is. What sort are these ones? These are 5050, uh, being the dimension uh, 5.0 mil millimeters by 5.0 millimeters, 5050 RGB LEDs, as opposed to the. Um, um, the NeoPixel uh, WS 2812 uh, ones. So these have an individual line for each color, red, green, and blue, and then plus 12 volts. So you take them negative. They are common anode. And each one, for each color, there is a separate resistor so that they can get the, uh, the brightness matching. Let's see if you can read those resistors. So the green is uh, 150 ohms. The blue is 150 ohms, and the red is, what is that? No, it was upside down. It's 561, which is 560 ohms. 56 and 10, 151 being uh, 15 plus 1, add a 0, and 1, yeah. 
5 meters, uh, 50-50 SMD LED, 300 white RGB flexible strip light waterproof, except for not waterproof. This is the guy that I bought them from, but this isn't the exact listing that I got them from. I bought them at auction, yes, see. Um, does he have... Oh, I mean, you can find them with those search terms. Uh, the important part is 50, 50 uh, and 5 meters. But that is the guy I bought them from. I got them at auction for $5.88, um, which is a pretty good price, I think. It's a couple of bucks off anyways. Um, so, But yeah, it's nothing completely out of the ordinary, just more uh, LED strips. It occurs to me that I probably ought to test this thing, yeah? So I got 12 volts on my little power supply here. Set it to measure current. I've got the positive set to the common. Blue, that's drawing 880 milliamps. Red is drawing 838. And green is drawing what's well, current limiting at 1 amp. Holy crap. Okay, flip the current limiting off a little bit. 1.03 amps for green. Wowzers. What shall we look at next? How about this? It is electronics. Oh, okay, there we go. Oh, a couple of different things. Let's look at these first. These are circuit board mount USB A, I think that's called. Um, that is basically the one that you'd find on the back of an old school printer or, I oh, want that fit. There we go. Or um, some of the earlier Arduinos, um, like this guy here. So, and actually, is that the same? That's the same footprint. Oh, good. So if I destroy that. But that's basically, I just got those uh, to use as power connections. Um, just to complete the, uh, complete the accumulation of stuff. Just for, you know, repairs and... I suppose the occasional project if I wanted to bug somebody and uh, be especially old school. Uh, what else is in this package? Two, oh, those are, those are DigiSparks, aren't they? Um, yes, they are. AT Tiny 85 breakout board. Um, it's essentially the same as the DigiSpark that's inside this one, actually. It might even be the same one. Um, yeah, I think it is. Okay, so that's, yeah, it's an AT Tiny 85 chip, a uh, little voltage regulator, a couple capacitors and resistors on board just to keep it running. And what else? Not much else, actually. Five pieces USB 2.0 female type B connector replaced solder port new. Type B, did I say they were type A on when I said, sorry about that. Um, from King Electronics, $15.32 for the package of five of them and free shipping. Also from King Electronics, 15 one piece mini AT1085 micro USB development board for DigiSpark Kickstarter. Um, same price as I paid for them. Uh, I got two of them for $4.62 or two thirty-one per each and as always free shipping okay this one calls itself led module which is not all that descriptive but it is probably a pretty good no it's not what it is it's not even close to what it is this looks like a shield of some sort oh yeah this is another one of those nano what they call them sensor shields um hang on yeah, uh, it's a, basically it's a breakout board for the Arduino Nano. It drops right on there. It allows you to power it from a barrel jack and it's got its own regulator and uh, stabilizing capacitors and reverse voltage diode and capacitor and everything else. It's got its own reset switch down here. This would probably be easier to show you if it was up close. And then for each of the pins, they're broken out. It has um, a, a 5 volts and a ground plus the signal pin on each and every one of them all the way around. There's the analog pins, there's the digital pins. And, oh, I just noticed, hang on. 
something else. I've had a few of these and I never noticed this before. The it has a set of header pins on the side of it that matches or almost matches. Does it match? Yeah, it matches the layout of an Uno minus a couple of extra pins. So there's your analog pins. There's your digital pins. So what doesn't it have? Um, so that's SD and SCL. It doesn't have broken out up there. And down here, it doesn't have reset and... What is that last one? IO ref reference voltage. Okay. But everything else is broken out. So you could either put female headers on there and stack Uno shields on top of it. Or mount well, or uh yeah, solder it up to another other shields. That's probably the most likely thing you do is put female headers on there and stack shields on it. So kind of versatile, even more versatile than I thought. Multifunction expansion board sensor shield compatible for Arduino Nano version 3 from Shenglong Shi, somebody I've bought from several times before. Um, currently selling for $1.29 US or $1.72 Canadian. Back when I bought it, it was $1.60. So, looks like either the price has gone up. Actually, no, they're on discount right now. Or maybe it's just exchange rate that's done that. I'm not sure. 14 I.O. pins, uh, servo type with ground power and signal. Yeah, there's actually a lot of modules that come with that sort of a cable on them. Eight analog pins. No, there aren't eight analog pins. Are there? Yes, there are. Oh, that's right. That's one thing that it does have that the, uh, that the Uno doesn't have. So it must leave off one of those analog pins because um, the Nano has, has more analog pins than the Uno. Okay, so on that uh, shield header there, it's uh, it's going to drop one of them. Something interesting. One servo power input that would be this guy here. Uh, five I two C expansion pins. I'm guessing that's those over there, possibly. Analog ref output three point three volt output. Really? Oh, okay, those are on these pins at this end here. Okay, we learned something about that that I didn't notice on my first inspection. And the last thing, it says charging kit. Hmm. I know over the years I've ordered a few different uh, power banks, and I'm guessing just by the size of it, that's probably what this is. Yes, it's a power bank kit. It's a slightly bigger and different... Oh, 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 I see something interesting inside the hair. Crinkle, crinkle. There's a solar panel in there. Wow, that's cool. So we have a little metal tray. Two little metal pieces. That. Oh, wow. It's also a flashy light kind of a thing. So I'm guessing that that drops into one of those. And that drops into there. Slight diffusion, okay. And then Mr. Solar Panel goes on to other side. Sure it does. Probably held in place with that. Now then, uh, let's add some screws, a push button, and some LED diffusers just for those little LEDs there. There's a fairly big LED, a five millimeter, up on there. Let's get in closer to this board, shall we? So, what do we have here? We have battery minus and battery plus. We have LED plus, sun plus, sun minus and LED minus. What it doesn't have, though, is any way to hold the battery pack. Hmm. This is a fairly, well, relatively standard board. I'm thinking Big Clive's looked at this one before, or something similar. Maybe a pre-made one that he tore down. It's seeming familiar. The solar panel is actually in two sections by the look of it. There's a minus... Oh no, just one section. Okay. So it's got a protective film on it. That's nice for the shipping. And, uh, yeah, okay. So there's that. 
how there's of course no instructions so does that sit down in there yeah maybe it falls right through is there any clips to hold it at all no same with that how does it hold in here yeah it can just fall right through hmm well that's an interesting collection of components anyways mechanically it seems to kind of suck wonder if you just have to hot glue everything together that would be lame so what do we have on this end here where the board fits in so clearly that has to go in there somehow okay oh okay so that snaps in to little clips there there we go one side two sides that actually yeah sort of push it through a little bit now i didn't put the uh, push button and the diffusers and everything in there so what we got we got a two amp output a one amp output and a five volt in are those really separate okay yeah, those are in parallel and those are in parallel so they're not actually separate they are the same which is moderately disappointing but not in the least bit surprising oh well let's uh, see how much i paid for this beast solar power bank 300 thousand milliamp hours Ooh. portable dual usb battery charger 20 led for phone i got it in black when i bought it it was five dollars and 93 cents currently it's on sale for 22 cents off so that's basically the same price okay so okay uh it's showing solar panel solid metal material led purple that's that five millimeter led uh the one and two amp outputs and the one amp input for charging power button power indicator blah 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 Ooh, things you can do with it you can cycle travel take a bus or you can outdoors this is a power bank kit including circuit board and shell not a finished product you should buy five 18 650 batteries and install them by yourself cables not included either so let's play with these parts of this thing just for a minute here i've uh, got my power supply set to about 4.2 volts which is going to be a fully charged uh lithium-ion battery and i'll see what happens when i power up this led panel well that's fairly bright and it's currently emitting at half an amp so it can actually it'll draw more than that but that's that's fine i don't want to burn it up or anything now then the solar panel let's see what it's good for any bits under my studio lighting well, that's not too bad five volts I mean, this isn't sunlight 5.2 i'll get right up to it 5.2 that's not bad what happens if we go into current mode is 20 milliamps overestimating it i don't know let's find out no almost six hmm almost six milliamps that's bugger all let's light this thing up um just for convenience i'm going to power it off the power supply too since it's already set for 4.2 volts um it shouldn't harm anything it'll look to all the world like a fully charged lithium ion pack shouldn't it i would think so so clamp that to battery negative without shorting onto the adjacent pad clamp that to battery positive turn that on my two charger doctors in there so that one's saying 5.2 volts and that one is did that just reset that one's saying 5.22 volts as well interesting so it's only showing two out of four on the old power bar there tap him a couple of times that led comes on so what happens if we put a one amp load on this is the one that's labeled one amp this is the one that's labeled two amps so put a one amp load on the two amp side 
Oh, that's not happy. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see more what's going on. That doesn't look happy at all. Pull those out. Does it reset? I'm going to have to pop the button. Hey, there they both wake up. Well, that's disappointing. Can it even power my little USB disco light? No. No, it says it's drawing like nothing over on the power supply. Wow. That sucks. And I got a half amp current limit on the power supply, but this thing should be like milliamps, right? Let me try that on this side. It blinked for a second and then that's, well, that's just not performance. So there's today's Mailbag Monday haul. As usual, a fairly broad assortment of things that just caught my fancy on eBay. Uh, shipping time. The Nano Sensor Shield here took five weeks. And those are really handy to have around. I've, I've got a couple of them attached to the model railroad already. Um, what's next here? These copper heat sinks and USB. No, did they come together? No. Uh, the copper heat sinks came on their own. They took six weeks to get here. Ah, these uh, 80 tiny boards and the USB, that's what came together. They took 22 days. The power bank kit took 22 days as well. And the Speed Demon, which isn't really a surprise, this LED pack because it, uh, or this LED strip, because it shipped from Canada, it took 12 days. And again, that was back during the postal strike. So that's actually yeah, not horrendous for during a strike, I guess. I would have expected it to take about a week under normal circumstances. But there we go. Um, a project, shop stock. I've actually got a Raspberry Pi. I think it's a B. I think those will fit on it. We'll see. Um, it actually is my uh, home theater computer. I guess that's everything for today. Thanks for watching. As usual, I will talk to you later. Oh, and a special thanks, as always, to my Patreon supporters. Yeah. Um, I'll put links down in the uh, description below about uh, both the Nonsuch Brewery and more important, well, more interestingly, breweries are important, more interestingly about the ship itself and the museum, because that's something that's that I find really fascinating. Okay, talk to you later, this time for sure.